Rolster. Well, here we are. Picks and bands for game number two of Samsung versus KT Rolster. And the first band will be Lissandra in Italy. Yep, no big shock there. The Ezreal band again against KT. Samsung really worried about that double AD. Yeah, same bands for both teams coming out so far. They will have to ban Rek'Sai third here. Uh, or their bands don't make any sense at all. Considering that uh, they already banned out two junglers, so you want to remove the Rek'Sai also. But I'm not sure that this is a really a good ban strategy for red side, just because Samsung can first pick Jarvan, and then what is score play? Yeah. Nunu? Vi. Maybe. You can play Vi. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah. you can play Vi. It's not that so would, bad. That would work. Rumble ban. OK. What the what? Kuve is not a good rumble. I don't know why you banned that. Why would you ban Nidalee and Lee Sin just to give up Rek'Sai? Yeah. That is that is some bad banning right there from oh, KT. I, I mean, even the Korean cast is laughing about it right now. That makes no sense <laughs> at all. That's. <laughs> That literally makes All no right. sense. All right. Well, that was a terrible okay. ban phase for KT. So score could go to Jarvan. I really want to see him uh, go on something like Vi when he picks it eventually. But there is that Callista locked in for Arrow. Gets through the bans. Was not first picked. Yeah, KT. Do you trust Arrow on Callista? Monte Cristo? I, I think, I think that, that must have been the reason, is that they saw the, the Callista and they were like, okay, we'll force you to take Rek'Sai or Callista. That could be. But there are other ways to force them to take Rek'Sai or Callista, including leaving up some more junglers. Because if you look at this situation, okay, Nidalee and Lee Sin, I just sub that one, right one out. Say they ban Xerath um, instead, and maybe the Nidalee because they don't, they don't play it, right? Right. But there are other tools. In fact, I would have just banned out Xerath and Karthus and been like, hey, Ace, can you play anything else? Ban the Rumble as your last pick. Okay, give him, give him the Rex side, but at least give Score some more options. I don't know. Not, not a, not a great bit, uh, draft so far from KT. I still am curious to what Ace has, you know, up his, up his sleeve. As far as other picks go, we'll have to wait to see. Leona taken, so they're gonna give Fixer that Thresh again. Wow, Leona, I don't Graves. know if that's that the wisest thing. A crazy all-in lane at six. Yeah, but I mean, to give Fixer this Thresh after he's really only performed on Thresh. And there's that Vi for score. That's not too surprising. Normally, I would expect him to pick that over the Jarvan. And of course, Fixer's going to take Thresh. So what are the last two picks going to be? The top and mid. Wondering what they're going to be for Samsung. Unless it's China, where apparently you can run Rek'Sai in top lane. <laughs> yep. I love it. OK, well, will they take the Xerath again? Really risky against the Vi and the Maokai. You have a lot of ways to get back and make some plays onto that Xerath pickup. Uh, Karthus would not be bad here, uh, especially because you have high kill pressure in bottom lane already. True. You have a lot of bursts, and then you have a big uh, Requiem to yep. finish it all off, yeah. ideally. Karthus would be quite good here. And it will be, oh man, that is dangerous to play Mundo in top lane because Vi and Maokai can really mess Mundo up early. Yeah, that's, that's six, a really that's high, be... high pressure situation for Kuve. Oh, and Victor, interesting. This would be the first Victor we've seen Ace play. Remember, up till now, we've only seen him play Karthus, Xerath, and Cassidy. And so it's going to be Victor for Ace. All right, we'll have to see how he does on that popular champion. Oh my, this is such, this is a good draft from KT. In spite of their, yeah. in spite of their really questionable ban phase because they didn't have to give Rek'Sai over if they didn't want to. Um, this is still really strong from K. They ended up with a very strong composition. Uh, so much pick potential. They have kill pressure in all three lanes for Vi. Yeah. This is really dangerous. I don't think Samsung's going to get out of laning phase here. Well, with the way KT's been playing the laning phase recently, I'd be inclined to agree with you. Taking a look at that roster one more time. A lot of ways to catch your opponents on the KT side and an unproven mid laner on that Victor. And, uh, you know, Samsung thinking about blowing up the back lines, I guess, but are they going to get to the upper, get to the point where they can do that? And how many times is Kuve going to get dove in top 3 6? That's what I'm wondering. Especially with Nagne on Ari, who will be yeah. able to roam as well. They're so stationary in mid and top lane. Low mobility composition, arrow 
and Fixer will be having that huge cluster kill pressure in bottom as well. Man, Score is going to have a field day here. He can pick really <laughs> so many targets in terms of this laning phase and set them up for his teammates. Yep, well, here comes Vi and here comes the rest of Samsung and KT. Can KT get the 2-0? Let's get in the game and find out. Here we are, KT fighting for a 2-0 and a little bit of pride. And Samsung still kind of trying to put the basics together. But Ace picking up Victor for the first time this season. This mid laner looking like he maybe has a bit of potential. We'll see what happens. I think this game is actually going to tell us a lot about Ace. Yeah. I agree with you. you know, I'm really surprised that they banned the Ezreal instead of the Vi too. If we look at KT's record, that Vi has really been instrumental in their in their team fighting yeah. recently, and was in both of the games they took against CJ and SKT. So I don't know if I'd let him have it just because Score has been quite good on that champion, and KT has followed up well on the assault and battery. Uh, I'm not too confident in Samsung's draft here, but. At least they got Rek'Sai. Yeah. Fan asking Faker for uh, Mercy for one of these teams. <laughs> Let's pray to Faker for not Mercy. Quite, not quite sure which one. All right, well, KT trying to set up here for the double sapling into Orb of Deception for the early XP boost. And we're not actually going to see that ward in against Rek'Sai on the blue side. So if Eve had chosen to start at that bottom side, he could have gotten a good lead for Fury and Wraith, which would have been very helpful, considering that they are really a bully lane. There we go. Quick XP takes a death ray for it, but not the biggest deal. Oh, they're going to give over Gromp, actually. Wow. Oh, well, uh, that is interesting. An arrow and Fixer could certainly use it. Looks like Wraith and Fury are still going to take the Krugs. Just uh, Wraith going into lane with a bit more damage. Yeah, Pots okay. used. But in the end, though, they didn't get really anything for that. Samsung tried, didn't fully commit to disrupting the saplings, and so you did see that advantage going over, and then... Oh, there's a level two flash play onto Fury. They're gonna do a lot of damage to him right off the bat. They get the flash out of Fury as well. Ignite use by Fixer. May have been a little bit over eager there. No, I think using the summoners right there is valuable because yeah. you were able to chunk the AD carry, and that's the big, big win. I guess you do use his only potion, yep. and then he's kind of stuck. Yeah, yeah, it's it's going to be good, especially if they can maybe land one more hook, and they'll force him out of lane. So yeah. it's, uh, it's it's a big commitment. Could be a little too all in, depending if the jungler comes or anything like that, or if uh, Fixer makes a mistake. But I think in theory, it's be solid. That seems to be working just fine so far. Obviously, the junglers for both teams nowhere nearby. And Fixer coming in again. He's got an opportunity to get a death sentence here. He's walking up, and that buckshot used. That kind of is your free ticket, basically, to walk up and do something. Yeah, Great and Fury are going to want to play this one back, though. They need to keep, they want to uh, keep KT pushed right now so that the opportunity to kill this Thresh may present itself. Score! Whoa, score! He had sub-20 hit points for a second there. Wait for that Q. Oh, yep. he's got the uh, dented glows, and that's going to actually get it for him. Close call there for score with the Krugs. The Wraith going in gets that's flayed right. away. Nice moves by Fixer, actually. So right there, score was just waiting for his passive shield to come back up yep. on Vi, and so was able to turn around. Close call, though. Very close call. Gets out of it in the end, goes back, picks up his Trailblazer and some... Potions, Eve doing exactly the same thing, so pretty passive early start here. KT really should start trying to abuse this Mundo early on. Pink Ward goes down right behind red. That's what they want to do. Yeah, score is heading into the top lane again, so or into the top side of the map, so I wonder. I wonder. Looks like he wants to make sure there aren't any wards first, does clear out the Raptor buff with the smite. And he's just gonna keep jungling. He's going really hard for six, but by the time he has that Mundo will also have six. And Fury and Wraith have that kill pressure at six as well. So I think 
may be good to try and get. There's a really big opportunity on this window right now. It's pushing forward, so I'm a bit surprised Score didn't move into top lane after taking Raptor. It seems a bit unscore-like, doesn't it? If you make that play right now, why not just go for it? Yeah. Definitely agree. Even though it's going to get the get the Rift Scuttler in the bottom river, that's pretty helpful. Score is there in case there's a counter gank, but there's no gank, so he doesn't need to worry about countering anything. That is Raptor buff popped right there. Yeah, that should be able to take out this ward. Wraith and Eve using that tremor sense to find Score right there. Score just going to back off. Doesn't want to walk there. No vision. Yep. Now Nagne knows, or he should know anyway, because uh, Score, I believe, saw them, didn't he? I thought he caught a glimpse of them yeah, going into the brush. Have, yeah, he may have. Well, the message may not have gotten to Nagne. Nagne backing up, up to the turret. Looks like he'll get out instead. Gets knocked up, but no problem there. Yeah, no follow-up. Yeah. He's just too far back in the lane, so. kuve has got to be close to six now. Yeah, he should be hitting it pretty darn soon. Score. Still level four. Trying to farm out this jungle. Usually you want to hit level six approximately as a jungler around when you get your second red or blue buff. Eve, uh, he's going to find that ward. But the ward finds him too. Death sentence, Fury is doing a good job of do dodging that. I mean, Fixer and Arrow have not been able to get any kills yet in lane, although they have gotten a decent CS lead. Yeah, they've been slowly building that up, but there's a really, really big wave here, so that should even out pretty nicely for Fury, as long as he can get, grab most of these last hits. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, wow. Very passive game. I'm really surprised KT is playing this so passively, considering their strength. Oh, Flay, Wraith tried to come in anyway. Eve jumping in as well. They're going to get the knock up onto Fixer. Arrow trying to save him. He's waiting. He didn't have five. He couldn't pull him out with the ult. And there's first blood going to Wraith. Filled with spears, but also filled with gold now. <laughs> and that was a pretty obvious gank from Samsung going for Fixer right before he got his summoners back up. Yep. And good timing by Eve. Eve with the nice gank path through the wall right there. And not enough caution from the KT Rollster duo lane. Yeah. I mean, Fixer's been trying to get death sentences all game long, but he just hasn't hit me. And beyond that, I mean, not a lot of aggression. You just have to be careful right there and make sure that your jungler sh should be there for any kind of counter gank. If you right. have those summoners down, you want to push up aggressively. Also, didn't have a ward in that tri brush, so it made it a lot more difficult to see that one coming. And they're going after the scuttler for himself. And Vi is going to hit six very soon now. Should be, yeah, just passing off that blue buff to Nagne first. And then it'll be up to those plays. KT has so many opportunities on this map right now. Especially yeah. now they have one on bottom lane too with Wraith's flash being down. Arrow is level six, so they can start off the CC train with that Fates call. Very true. I'm sure Fixer would much rather be six as well. Get that box down. It looks like it's going to be a dragon though for KT. And uh, there's a little bit of vision nearby, and there is a Rek'Sai pit in there. But I don't think... Yeah, they're not destroying it, though, because they don't want... They don't want him to know, yeah. yeah don't I, I don't think know. that Samsung's going to be able to do anything. And they're not. So first Dragon does go to KT. Makes up for the first blood in terms of, you know, giving them a little bit of a power boost. Interesting choice not to destroy the Rek'Sai tunnel at the end. Not giving them any information whatsoever, but it does allow... Oh! Oh, that charm was very close to connecting. Score Even right there. We're right there, though, yeah. Oh, he goes in on the score, forcing that flash right away. Nagne, charm was on cooldown, so he couldn't bring Wraith in any farther. Nice job by Wraith. Really good force flash. Ace could have followed that up very easily. Yeah. With a lot of damage, so definitely a necessary flash from score. And it looks like Evil just kind of continue to jungle. So things returning more or less to normal. Dead even is the gold right now between these two teams. Wow, really surprising that it's been this passive. You look at a corky Graves lane and these big bullies like Kalista and Thresh and then these immobile in Mudno. It's 
there's been there's been a lot of kill pressure in this game, but nobody's actually made use of it. Yeah. Really, except for Samsung when they got that kill on the bottom lane, and I think that was a really good call for me. Now there's gonna be another chance too once Leona hits level six, which is imminent. To have another big fight down in this bottom lane. Fixer has done a pretty good job of flaying Leona away so far. But that's not going to stop the Solar Flare from coming in. And here comes Score now to the River Brush. And I, yeah, I think he, ooh, I don't know. That minion coming up. He was that one needs to go down. Yeah, yet, I do not believe. But His minions keep walking all the way. <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying <laughs> yeah. for him. Eve looking to potentially set up a gank right here himself. Does clear out that Sentinel, so he Ooh. has been seen. Uh, if that death sentence had hit, it might have gone okay. Level six for Wraith now, so he's got that solar flare. And here comes Score through the brush. Flash play, and they're gonna try to go in. There's the ult onto Fury, and the damage isn't gonna be enough. It is Score getting low though, and that's a kill from Samsung as well. Oh, nice death sentence onto Eve. Can they follow it up with enough damage? Meanwhile, a duel in mid lane, and Nagne wins the 1v1 versus Ace. Meanwhile, back to bot, another kill comes in for KT as Arrow gets that one, and they're gonna be able to do a lot of damage to both the mid and uh, bottom turret as well, too, with these waves. Yeah, really good initiation from Fixer right there, flashing yeah. in for the flay to guarantee the chain CC from score onto Graves, even the flash from Graves. Let's check that one again. Uh, not enough, so there's the flash after the dash and getting right in there on the Fury. Lots of damage, and here's what's happened in the mid lane. So Nagne sees the jungler in the bottom side, totally outplays Victor, avoids a lot of that damage, and the stun as well from the gravity field. And this is, this is a tough matchup for Victor. He is very immobile, and your CC is easily dodged with that Spirit Rush, as is the Chaos Storm, which isn't that fast moving. So great all in from Nagne. That's why it was so impressive a couple weeks ago when Faker did so well in as Victor into the RE matchup. Yeah, well, that's, that's Faker. Faker that's true. Kind of, Faker can kind of do what he wants to at this point. Great timing from Nagne, though. Yep. Given that opportunity, instant all in during that scrap and KT. Well, they also got the bot out to a good, too. Yeah, really good lead. Yeah. KT playing very well in the laning phase overall. Yeah, I they, mean, score made that that first gank count. Yep. Sure did. And Oeve dodges the death sentence with his tunnel. I wonder how much damage the uh, mid turret has on it for Samsung right now. Yeah, interesting Curious. question. We have to go. Take a look at that. Not a lot of wave clear here in bottom, so some free damage for Samsung on this turret. Nearly taking it actually out wow. right now. Yeah. It's a scary amount of damage. But KT with the edge for now. Second Dragon is up in two minutes. Something to consider. Oh, oh Fury has got to be careful. Fate's call. They load him up. Wraith blocks it. Not bad. The Flay comes down, though. There's oh, Solar Flare. Not a good Solar Flare. He's dead. Not the best. Yep. Wraith in trouble. No turret to save him. Meanwhile, I believe a flash was used by, uh, yeah, Wraith just to try to get away. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not the best time to flash. Definitely too aggressive right there. I mean, he did. really made it easy. He actually he saved, saved Fury. Fury yeah. yeah, Fury was the one who made the mistake. If you're gonna pick who dies there, I mean, team-wise, it's got to be the support, right? You have to keep the AD carry alive. So I think, even though the solar flare wasn't great, Wraith made the right play. You know, right? But a very easy Fate's call play made there from KT. Yeah, kind of see that one coming as well, especially given the summoners down on Samsung. Hero. Another all down. Yeah, getting another kill as well. Yep, up to 3 0 0. Looks like he's about ready to finish his Bloodthirster, which we've seen many Callistas in Korea build first. Great if you had to have a lead. Not so awesome if you fall behind. Yeah. Well, so far, so good. Jumped out to about a 2k gold lead. Looks like they're going to hand a set blue buff. Blue buff handoffs complete. Yep. And we will see the Scuttler go over to KT right as this dragon goes off. They got that bottom lane turret down, so they're in very good position on the map in order to make something work right here. I wonder if they're going to try to go for a play on Nagne here. They've got Wraith and Eve right there. Uh, but there's a pink ward. They see Eve. Fury there as well, too. I think Nagne is going to play this one pretty far back if he's... 
Yeah, they, Safe. Have, they have every advantage right here yep. to take this dragon that is live. Big minion wave you know, has to be cleared out by Samsung, and that should trigger an attempt at the dragon. They have vision control. Score is trying to sweep out that brush. They should just go for it right now. I mean, they see Graves' bottom. There's no, you know, doesn't matter if there are wards right there. That's true. And now they're going for it. Okay. The yeah, problem is the wave is clear, so now there is potentially a play that Samsung could make, but with this rend and the smite, it's like it'll be all over anyway, so yeah. KT gets to have their cake and eat it too. <laughs> the best way. <laughs> yeah, so that's two dragons for KT. And uh, I don't believe Samsung got one last game, did they? I don't think they did. I don't believe they did. Yeah, it was all KT. So that's uh, dragon number six in a row for KT tonight then. Because they made it to four before closing it out last game. Someday. Just moving forward. Nothing too exciting right now. KT happy just to snowball this advantage. Continue to create picks with their composition. They should be going for so. Needing to advance that ward line just a little bit, but they've already got some nice deep wards into the bottom side. And Righteous Glory as well for someday, just to increase that pick potential even further, but they really should be playing around with Vision Fury. Ooh, dangerous position right there. Very dangerous. He didn't know where Thresh was. Yeah. Well, we saw what happened when uh, Bangs Callista caught people just kind of milling about when they didn't know he was in the brush. It did not go well for the other 80 carries. And score doing a nice job of clearing at the moment. Trying to put yeah. down some pressure, but you need to get in there with score and fixer in order to capitalize on the split pushing that's going on from Callista. You actually have to actively threaten the members of Samsung. They can get in there too. They can four man and take out those pink wards that have been placed pretty far back there. Yeah. That's what they're going to do. Should be able to get both of them right here. Oh, Fury, can they get him? They bring in Score the Lantern. There's a flash ultimate under turret. Fury trying to do some damage, but he's not nice going to get a chance. Job. Very clean dive from KT. Both flashes used, yep. but they make the play. Here we go. Face it's call. Face call. Oh, yeah, nice. Well, they get him with the play, and that's enough. Nagne picks up the kill. Yeah, wow. Fixer, and we've seen this before, you know, playing so well with that Thresh out of the Fates call. I mean, Fixer's just a great Thresh player. One thing KT has going for them is their dives have been, while they were really shaky in that game one against CJ, they've been yeah. really good today. True. Just great synergy, using flashes to make those plays. KT skirmishing, really looking sharp. And that is very, very clean mechanical plays right there. Fixer is really good. At Thresh. I think that bottom lane has been thoroughly dominated by KT. They've already got the tier two down. Time to time to rotate and start looking at some other lanes, huh? Yeah, and definitely, as yeah. you were saying, Doa, maybe smart to start banning this Thresh away from Fixer. I because really think you should. He's been a good playmaker on it. You don't want to yeah. give them that window of opportunity. And it's not just that he's been good on Thresh, it's that he's been not good on his other picks. His Leona yeah. was okay. Everything else was just really uninspiring. I do feel that his Leona was really a compositional problem. I think there yeah. was an absolute mm. crap champ to play into or play with the composition that they had. The double AD, I didn't understand it, especially against the intense, uh, the intense Engage coming out of CJ in yeah. that game three. But I still do think it hurts Fixer quite a bit to ban that Thresh. Well, certainly worth finding out what else he can play at the very least. Yep. True enough. That mid turret getting very, very low now. KT not gonna have not going to have too much of a hard time knocking that down in the near future. And what we saw from KT is that when they can just hard engage like this, they have a lot fewer problems closing out the yeah, game. Yeah, that's true. When they don't have to siege very actively, when they can dive the towers with Vi and some other all-in champions, it gets much, much faster in terms of their ability to close. So I doubt we'll be seeing the same thing that we saw last game from them where they made a bunch of mistakes Yeah. in terms of how long and how efficiently they could close out the game. This is much more a style that we've seen them previously be really effective on. They've nearly got mid down again. And can they contest this blue? Let's see, they're coming in. Nagne really wants it. There's a charm. Did he get Score it? Score got it. Score was able to get it and smite it away. Yeah. And KT just taking everything right now. 
minute 30 till the next dragon, and uh, I think they're in prime position to take that one as well. That would be their third, actually, for the game. Yep. Dragon number three. And they almost have that mid turret down as well. So they're narrowing in on that outer ring. And they're already taking down two in the bot lane. Yep, and uh, the one in top as well, so. This has been solid pressure play from is. KT Rollster. Yep. And they've amassed a 6,000 gold lead with that too, near 6,000 gold lead. Looking really good. And I feel like this is where Samsung really does suffer, is, is that you're not playing into their game. You're not brawling with them, you know? You're not having a lot of these scrappy team fights. You're just methodically pushing objectives. And if you get a chance to dive and get a very sure kill, you go for it. And Samsung just has a hard time handling that, you know? They're used to really getting in there, fighting all the time. Well, they need a bit of scaling, too. Uh, Mundo just needs oh, this time. Game, yeah. And whenever we've seen Samsung try and run scaling compositions that do well in the late game, they just get destroyed early and never have a chance to actually utilize a power spike because they find themselves just too far behind. Yep. Well, we've seen it many times before. Victor also does need a bit of time in order to become powerful. We see that big CS advantage for Nagne. He also solo killed Ace and Lane. Well, they're coming in now. Dragon is up. Score clearing out some wards as they get thrown over the wall. He's got a pink there, so he's in good shape. Nagne doing a bit of damage to Eve, a lot of damage actually yeah. with that Foxfire. Really good poke. Score coming over the wall right there, wants to see if they can actually finish this off with some sort of uh, kill. We'll see. They need the rest of the team there right now. Kalis is doing Dragon. I think it's all zoning at this point. Five play from Score, just popping over the wall to threaten and then going straight onto the Dragon. They yep. should be able to get it quite easily now. And they do. So that would be Dragon number three for KT. That was some nice nice dragon control from KT. Yeah, not bad at all. They were looking for a possible engage, but they didn't find it, and so were able, they had champions that could create that pick, or at least threaten it, while Arrow has that Bloodthirster, so just quite easily capable of tanking out that dragon, and pretty safe overall, too, just because of the dashes from Leona and Vi, and both flashes being up as well, made it very safe to toy around on the backside of the pit. Oh, flash with the wall, Wraith going in, lands his Zenith Blade onto score. There's the Solar Flare as well. Nagne coming down to support. Samsung has to back off. Score? Wraith, you can't blame the guy for trying to make a play. Well, score got far enough away, though, that there wasn't any follow-up. Yeah, unfortunately for uh, Samsung, that yeah. is true. But they're didn't, getting a bit desperate now. Didn't even have to use this flash to get far enough away either. Just hitting the Vault Breaker. Yep. And without that Solar Flare, it's super dangerous to be Samsung. Yeah, with arrow super, back. It's, uh, so. Specifically super dangerous to be Fury and Ace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's mostly dangerous to be Ace. Yes, that's true. Even though he does have that cleanse and the flash. Fury, up right now, there are a lot of tools to get back onto him. Fury can quick draw, which apparently means jump in a direction, you know, dash. Like, I don't know why. You can't draw your guns faster when you jump or dash? He just, he just like, pulls his gun out so fast, the momentum of his arm just pulls him, you know? <laughs> and that ends up being sort of a hop. I have no idea why that ability is called that. Yeah. I mean, I get that it gets gives his, it increases well, his attack speed, but, like. Dude, he's like a bank robber or something, right? So why don't they just call that move getaway? <laughs> Seriously. That's, a, you know, that sometimes they do rename moves. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they should. But this usually, would be, this would be usually a it's a, one. a downgrade. I was, yeah, was going to say. Rest in peace, spray and pray. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> never forget. I won't, because I'm never going to call it anything else but that. Me too. I think getaway is much better for uh, Graves' <laughs> dash. Quick draw makes no sense. Even It does make him shoot faster, but the actual physical motion. Uh, yep. Yeah. Doesn't really say quick draw, right? It's not in line with the most obvious part of that ability. And besides, quick drawing doesn't make you shoot faster in succession. It just makes you shoot the first shot faster. Yeah. Doesn't so, make any sense. Yeah. You know, maybe if it was like a dash and a single auto reset, but no, you can't do that. Meanwhile, Nagne going in onto Ace. He missed the charm, though. Ace actually doing a pretty good job of dodging those skill shots. Whoa, you can't dodge a Vi, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can dodge a charm, but you can't dodge a <laughs> giant metal fist. <laughs> wow. That came out of nowhere. <laughs> and KT with the great disengage in the top side, yep. too. Limiting that pressure. Nagne and score. We'll get this tower down in the mid lane right now. 
Dropping. Wow, they don't want to actually hit the tower on that wave. Okay. Huh. Interesting choice. They're just savoring They'd rather it. have the blue buff. They're I savoring the 2-0. That 2-0. That's good. It's worthy of savoring for KT. They really. That's, that's true. Uh, you know, they only get 2 O's against Samsung, so. That's, that's also true. <laughs> that's also true. Fury dodges the death sentence with his getaway. <laughs> and that turret's going to go down. Eve coming in for the knockup onto Maokai. They're going to try to make something out of it. They're desperate. Fury getting a couple autos in. The turret's still low. Wraith comes in. Solar Flare, not the best again. Arrow's still relatively untouched, but he's a bit unsafe. Has to get away from that Chaos Storm. Meanwhile, Nogne in the back line's really causing havoc. Fury getting very low. Is it enough damage with the Ignite? Doesn't look like it is quite yet. Nogne is going to pick up a kill onto Eve anyway. Kube chasing through. And Ace in a position TP. to be scary. Yeah, here comes a TP now for someday. Comes in onto Kube. They're going to get that kill on the top laner. And KT can back off very safely. Now, they didn't get Ace. They didn't get Fury. Didn't get the turret. They got two kills. Didn't lose anyone. Could be worse. Could be, but that was also a pretty scary team fight for them, considering their lead and the fact yeah. that they almost lost several members. If somebody hadn't had that teleport up to come right back in with home guards, it was on the verge of Kuve really cleaning them up right there. It's possible. There goes the kill. Finally getting that tower down. So take a look at this. I mean, someday does take a lot of damage before this fight even starts. Race does a good job of getting into the team, forcing them to grab that Thresh with the Fates call, score gets chunked out, and then Nogne so close to killing Fury, but can't quite get that last bit of damage in. Score gets a knock up, and then here is Someday to save the day right now. Ace, wow. Ace really retreated quite quickly in that fight. I feel like Ace and Fury kind of left Kuve to dry. I mean, he got a little bit nervous, but he and Fury had like yeah. a lot of really nice damage at the beginning at of the that At the beginning, fight. but he yeah. could have kept putting down damage right there as well, well over the wall with the death ray and maybe actually turned that around, one around a little more. You know, I feel like, whoa, score getting a bit caught makes it on the lantern. Yeah, I feel like that's kind of just a rookie thing, right? It's just not quite knowing your place in the team fight. Not knowing your limits either. Not that knowing your limits, yep. I think he, he could have closed that one out a little bit more aggressively and given Samsung a, a chance to fight back in this game. Or at least a kill or two, yeah. Yeah. 20 seconds until what would be, I believe, dragon number five? Uh, four, four. Dragon four. number four for KT. I suppose it is a bit early for dragon five, isn't it? Yeah, QSS now onto Arrow as well. Yeah. That's, I don't know if I like that, actually, considering that he's been doing a pretty good job of dealing with Wraith in you know, general. And he really needs armor pen. Mundo is getting really, really tanky. So. And the Ari's burst is just not going to burn through Mundo fast enough when he has his ultimate on. So you yeah. really need those sustained auto attacks. That is true. So that one of the problems that they had in that last team fight is Mundo is getting pretty big. Yep. Well, another dragon for KD. They are up to four now. And Nagne still lurking in the brush, waiting for someone to clear out that wave. But nobody's coming, so he's just going to clear out his side, I guess. So they they can just go bait Baron at this point. They, they can. Yep. They absolutely can. Ari is trying to take out a pink ward in the bottom side, though. Not going to get it. Yeah. Nagne really likes the split push these days. I think he yeah. should be focusing on grouping right now. He doesn't need to keep pushing this wave. Just kind of fishing for maybe uh, some 1v1 kills. Well, they are a bit concerned because Kuve has TP advantage right now, but the one of the things they have to be very aware of is the fact that because Kuve has TP, if Ari is down on this bottom side of the map, yes, she can stop the split pushing, but Lindo can turn something into a 5v4, and they have hard engage with this Leona. So I think I mean, it's a bit dangerous. Just better for Ari to try to get the Baron right now. That's what they're going to do. It's yep. just the right call. Nagne coming up the river right now to join the rest of his team. Score zoning a bit, getting some wards down. That Baron at about two-thirds health at the moment. This could get a little bit hairy. Here, Here comes the teleport coming in. They're going to go in under Wraith first, though. Arrow on the outside of the fight, getting a lot of autos. And here comes Nagne over the wall into the blue pit. Wraith already on the disengage. And they got the death sentence onto Fury. Wow, Someday still gets in the back lines. There's a kill for Nagne onto the AD carry. Score just going to Vault Breaker to safety, rather. Nagne with the double. Vault Baker, that's a new Vice skin. There's a triple kill. 
for Nagne and KT. Looks like they're about ready to uh, take their first inhibitor, if nothing else, could turn onto that Baron, too. KT played that really well, yeah, especially Nagne, who came in and single-handedly zoned out both Ace and Fury out of that fight, which gave them the time to burn down the Mundo uh, in the front line, of course. Vi does really well against these super tanks thanks to her percent health damage. If she can get a bunch of free autos off on a Mundo, it really, really helps uh, deal with him. Well, and Arrow that, got a great death sentence right yeah. onto Fury in the middle of that, too. Uh, look at this. Well, you watch Dogne come over the wall right here. Actually, you're not going to watch Dogne, but uh, basically, at the beginning of that fight, they couldn't do anything. Really good combo, holding on to that assaulted battery. Knock up again. Just insane knock ups. Great team fighting from KT in the choke. Yep. And the beginning of the fight was really important, though, because Nagne was totally zoning out yeah. uh, the carries of Samsung. Well, he chased Fury right into Thresh, basically. Yep. Yep. Yeah, really nice team fight from KT. Actually, that's one of their best team fights we've <laughs> seen this year. KT's styling a bit now. Well, you got to get Fixer in front. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He is the uh, locomotive of this pain train. Oh, and now he <laughs> brings Arrow in. <laughs> They haven't done the disappearing Maokai trick, though. They can't do that one this time. <laughs> the old Callista Thresh leapfrog. Yep. It works. You know, it's too bad, though. If you really want to style, you let the, the hook come out, and then you Fate's Call back to Callista and hook them all the way back in. Can you do with, that? You can do it with Blitzcrank. Oh, really? Yeah, if you, if you have Blitz. Uh-huh. You hook first, land the hook, and then Fate's Call, and it pulls them all the way back to Callista. So you get like double range. It's pretty sweet. What happens if uh, you activate the second Q on Death Sentence for Thresh? So you start going towards him, and then you get Fate. Then you get Fate called. I think you just get pulled back. Or does Callista get pulled towards them? <laughs> no, 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 that doesn't matter. There's a lot of weird stuff going on with that Fate's Call. Score coming in. Oh, he lands the ult onto Ace Maokai with the follow-up. Kuve trying to be a nuisance in the back lines, but Arrow just happily hopping away, and Nagne going deeper in. Fury actually getting a couple good autos there, but it's a double kill for someday anyway. And KT cleaning up the rest of this fight. Kuve filled with spears and filled with sadness as he makes it almost back to the fountain. The rend is enough. Oh, they get him with the death sentence at the very end. At the very end before the rend will send Kuve to the end. I, you don't like rhyming, though, so I don't know what I you're talking about. I can't pretend. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Wraith wanted to give the ace. Thank you, Wraith. You're a nice guy. And so there we have it. Two 32-minute games. And this and is... KT Arrows will take the 2-0. Oh. Just KT. And just KT. Oh, well, a KT Arrow <laughs> and the rest of KT <laughs> will take the 2-0. Oh. Nailed it. I blame Monty. He confused <laughs> me at the end by talking. GG. <laughs> Well, that's KT did a much better job of closing that game. This yeah, is they the, did. This is the composition that they're really, really comfortable with running and that yep. they've looked the best with. And KT remaining a bit of an enigma, although. Well, that was against Samsung. That was against Samsung, but they have taken games in the last two weeks off of CJ and SKT. So it does seem like they're finally finding a style that really works for them. Yeah. Fixer, another great game on Thresh. This guy, you, I think you really need to.